Hello, everybody. Welcome to Manga Pod. We are a weekly podcast, which we all... I like that you didn't, like, warn any of us that you were going to do that. You've, like, literally been saving that this whole time. I was, yeah, I was prepped for it. Anyway, sorry, I ruined your intro. I just really no. wanted to commit to it. You went for it. We're a weekly podcast, which we all get together after we read all or part of a manga, and then we discuss it with friendship, love, and lots and lots of spoilers. This week we are talking killing, stalking, all of part one. It is actually a manhwa, so this is manhwa pod. Um, oh also our Halloween pod, so it's spoopy and gory and mature. So super mature, super mature. Man. Just know that right now what we're gonna be talking about today is like hell of mature for many reasons many adult content reasons i have a thing to tell you guys are you ready yeah as fun yeah. as it is for us to always call the mangaka of a manwa the mahanwagaka mahanwagaka <laughs> um i actually found out what it's actually called you did <laughs> yeah What's it it is a manwaga. Manwaga. That's nowhere near as fun. That's not as fun. A manwaga. 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 I guess. I mean, I guess I'll use the right word. Manwaga is like still better. I agree. Manwaga is better, but <laughs> we know what the actual word is. We got. <laughs> we got close. We did. What is it? Manwaga. 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 All right. <laughs> Okay. There's a little <laughs> bit of learning for you guys. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I'm Erin of Happily Erin, your host, and with me are my two of my three lovely co-hosts, as well as a very special guest. So have everybody go around and introduce themselves, please. Hello, everybody. I'm Dodger at Dex Bonus, and if I remember correctly. I was the person who originally brought Killing Stalking to Aaron's attention. Yes, so 100%. This whole thing is my fault, and I'd like to just take responsibility for that now before we start talking about it. <laughs> Perfect. Hi, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Lou from Lou Talks Anime, and I'm a victim of Dodger's decisions. <laughs> it's nice to meet you all. I hope everyone's having a lovely evening. I hope somebody <laughs> tuned in just to hear your intro. Not that. <laughs> just I hope so, too. <laughs> All right, my turn? Yeah. yeah! Um, hello, I'm Moika. I go by Mega Moika on pretty much every social media platform that I'm on. Um, hello. Hello. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this because originally, I started it, stopped, because I was like, I'm not in the mood for this right now. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then Aaron texted me and was just like, hey, by the way, do you want to be on MangaPod to talk about killing stalking? And I was like, hmm, time to go back into that rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'm so happy that you are able to join us last minute to talk about this. Mm. It was awesome. Um, if you guys have never joined us for a manga pod before, what we like to do is give you a short spoiler-free description of the manga that we read, aka summary, <coughs> the manhwa, aka summary. Then we'll give you our spoiler-free <laughs> recommendations, whether we think you should spend time going to read this or not. That way, if it sounds like something you are interested in, you can take your leave once we get to spoiler section. Go read it, come back and watch the VOD of this later. Um, we ask that nobody in chat post any spoilers for anything um, at all until we get to spoiler section. Once we're in spoiler section, you are allowed to post spoilers for up to chapter or uh, end of part one. So end of season mm. one. Um, once we uh, get into spoiler section, we'll give you uh, a brief like, this is where we stopped so that you know uh, where you guys can start talking about. But please do not post any spoilers until we get to the spoiler section. So yeah. let's go ahead and Miss Moeka, if you don't mind. Okay, um, oh. so, got this. the story follows Yoon Bum Boom, I'm not certain, sorry, I'm gonna ruin these Korean names, 
Um, story follows Yoon Boom, a young man who has a history of stalking people he admires. After becoming infatuated with Oh Song Woo, a peer from his time in the military, he decides to enter San Woo's home while he is out of his house. Yoon Boom then discovered by Song Woo, who is revealed to be Dun Dun Dun, a serial killer. The two then enter a highly manipulative and abusive relationship that brings out both their past and they grow closer together, exposing some dark secrets from both their problem-ridden past. Succinct. Good description. Yeah. It's succinct, yeah. 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 Does it. Cool, thank you! Uh, who would like to go first on recommendations? So, um... <laughs> I, if you are... I even have, I don't know, it's it's a weird, because it's typically when you say, like, oh, BL, it's, you're expecting, like, Japanese takes on it, so it's like, oh, it's gonna be like, they're gonna fall in love, and it'll have, like, a few weird spots where it's like, this is not healthy at all, and, um, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't have the, like, for me, some of the characters, I feel like they're not, actually gay no like oh, yeah yeah i feel like it's it has something to do with what their situ whatever their situations are and it's like really fucked them up so if you're in the mood to like in in the mood for gore and like something really fucked up like i would recommend it then otherwise i don't think i could be like hey mom check this <laughs> out you'll enjoy I would... it rarely so, yeah. recommend a manga to my mom <laughs> <laughs> good thing this is a manhwa you can totally yeah, that. yeah. That. all manhwa approved for moms um <laughs> yeah. um yeah so i i read killing stalking a really long time ago like when uh part one was still i want to say only like halfway through yeah it wasn't like even done yet yeah yeah, um, because I was trolling around somewhere and saw fan art of it. And I was like, interesting, what is this? The name, like, intrigued me, and I looked into it and, uh, bought the first couple of chapters. Um, it was early enough that there weren't, like, pirates of it anywhere, so you had to, like, pay for the chapters. And I was like, sure, I'll, yeah, why not? Um... And it's extremely psychologically fucked up, but I I really enjoyed that about it because it was so different from anything I had read before. Um, and I remember I, you know, I did recommend it to Aaron, so I've already yes. like ruined whether or not I would recommend it to somebody. Um, but yeah, I I think that this is not like a sappy great love story. This isn't a story about. A healthy relationship at all like by any stretch of the imagination um every chapter you might find yourself being like how can this get worse <laughs> right like yeah. it's one of those <laughs> sorts of stories um and sometimes that's really engaging and sometimes it's really off-putting and overall i think most people wind up sticking with it because of that feeling of like what is like how can this get worse can it get worse like where is this going right um if you're looking for something that is extremely psychological uh that is also like kind of interesting snapshots of of korean culture um i think i think that this is an engaging read but it has very much <coughs> huge maturity warnings on it um, go into it knowing that this is about a stalker and a serial killer, and it does not shy away from their mental state at all. It does not shy away from them treating each other like a stalker and a serial killer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, that's what it is, you know? It's not a nice story, um, but it's engaging for sure. So I guess if that's what you're looking for, I would recommend it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaron, go ahead and go first. <laughs> um, no, I agree with what uh, Dodger Moeka have both said. Um, it's hard to be like, yo, go and read this immediately. It's so good. <laughs> Even though, like, this, the first season is very good and does exactly what 
a psychological horror sets out to do and it does it so well it tells the story and the action and the diet like everything is done in a very well done way and that i get engaged every single time i read it even though that i know it's gonna happen um and I get skeeved out still every single time. And I thought, and like, I think it's a combination of how expressive the art makes the characters, um, plus all the, just the really fucked up stuff that is happening that the more you think about it, you're like, geez, this just gets under my skin because it is so messed up. Um, and so, like they said, if you're looking for something, if you're looking for a good psychological horror, um, this is definitely one to go into. The BL tag, I think um is there as like hey this is a bl like relationship but it's not like a stereotypical standard bl story like i think the bl almost isn't like a it's misleading i think it's misleading in some Me sense too. um and so but yeah heavy adult sex um nudity gore all that abuse all that uh, major tag warning there but the art is amazing yeah so it's it's a there you go <laughs> there it is <laughs> so um my take is if you're looking for a bl story specifically this is not what you should read uh read the last uh bl series that we read um what was it called? Uh, Hinamaru. Nope. I was gonna say this. That's <laughs> yes. I mean, go okay. read Hinamaru Shimo for your BL fantasies to yes. all come true. Oh. Yes, this is, this is true. I I can understand that subtext. There. I'm getting it. Uh. Hinamaru ga kikokuru. Yes. That what, one was fantastic. Said. It was yes. really good. That was really good. Um, if you're looking for a psychological story, at least this section that we read, definitely highly recommend it. Um, I know that there's going to be some people that will be turned away because of the BL content. Um, I don't think they should be turned away for that. I think the story is compelling enough and fucked up enough that anyone really should be able to enjoy this you know if if like to say otherwise i feel like the the reader would have to be either really narrow-minded or just not really into the psychological or as into the psychological components as they may think mm -hmm, because right. it is a it is a compelling story at least up to this point uh so, so you're, I, you're saying if somebody was looking for a story like this but they were like oh but i don't want to read it if it's about boys touching each other about then, two lads then then that's stupid but yeah, about two if, lads if you're not, if you're not looking for sheets. going on uh, a fun little romp yeah. um, exactly then then you know you're not gonna enjoy this but like if you if you have um no issue with with that part of the content then you're going to love this at least mm -hmm. this section uh, beyond this I tried to read beyond this. Every website I tried to go on was broken as shit. So I did my part. Yeah, maybe, I I don't know. I feel like it's not really a spoiler for me to say. I recommend part one, but I don't think I recommend part two. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's just honestly how I feel. But I haven't finished part two, so maybe that's unfair. But I've read a lot of part two, and I think part one is like very engaging and part two not quite as much but this isn't about part two we only read part yeah. one so whatever i will in, say in the, part in, one is stronger yeah in the comments larry is saying yuri on ice this is basically yuri on slice as in slicing throats yeah ha <laughs> 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 yeah. i can't believe this ah! <laughs> it's halloween it's hmm. poopy it it's is. a very spooky yeah. situation. <laughs> All right, let's jump into spoiler section. Are you guys good to go? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. This means that if this sounds like something you're interested in, you don't want to be spoiled for it. Now is the time to take your leave. Can I have a countdown, please? Five, four, three, two, 
one. Sang Woo is God. Sang Woo! Sang Woo! Sang Woo! I know. He's like, he is a very interesting character. And this goes back to what I was saying about uh, Kugi, who's the Mangaga. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? <laughs> Manwaga. Man 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 <laughs> Man Gaga. Man Lady Gaga. <laughs> Man Lady Gaga. <laughs> the greatest Manwaga of all time. Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it. Um, it goes back to like her ability to ex do expressions so incredibly well. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the way he can go from like incredibly handsome and sexy to holy shit crazy eyes. <laughs> so horrifying. fast it's yeah. horrifying um yeah. yeah yeah did a really really good job with making him like extremely charismatic mm -hmm. um sorry i guess we... no i that was my bad that was my bad i went like yeah. <laughs> into, into saying woo <laughs> Um, all right, let's do the question that we usually start with. What were you expecting before reading this manga? Since we've all read it before, try and just kind of like remember back when the first time you read it, what you were kind of expecting going into it. Yes, Dukes? I, def I definitely remember what I thought. <laughs> I, was gonna I honestly thought that this was not... I, I thought that it was going to be like... <laughs> We're killing people and we're in love. Like, literally <laughs> thought that that's what this was going to be. Because, again, I saw fan art. And, unfortunately, people read Killing Stalking and are like, oh, my God, they're so in love. And it's weird. <laughs> they're but, so um, cute. They're so cute and in love. And I'm like, they're not. But, <laughs> um, yeah, from looking at that, I uh, and then I, like, looked into the manhwa and started reading it, I was like, oh, this is going to be, like, an interesting love story. Like, that's kind of what I thought it was going to be, was, like, oh, these two people that are, like, fucked up, finding each other and, like, falling in love. And somebody might be able to argue that that is what this is. I don't think it is at all. <laughs> but um, it's... I, I thought that it was going to be much more, like, a romance story where the two people are, like, kind of messed up sometimes. Kind of more like where Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, together. We're gonna we're gonna be fucked up together, right? But it's, like, so much more, like, the layers of manipulation that go on in this manhwa are crazy. Like, it's mm -hmm. so, such a different tone from what I expected. Mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a good way. I, I'm glad that it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Yeah. To be honest, I... my first. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I mean, you can go first, Aaron. That's fine. Oh, mine's gonna be really fast. Mine. Um, I kind of knew exactly what I was going into because Dodger had just read it and texted me <laughs> what it was, and then I went in and I was like, "Yes, this is exactly what she was talking about." But I'm still like super duper engaged, so that was mine. <laughs> cool. Um, my expectations going into it the first time were based solely on people saying holy shit holy shit holy shit on uh twitter like occasionally like see seeing people tweet about it on my timeline but without any real context only knowing that it was a very fucked up uh manhwa and then uh it appeared on the schedule so i read it and <laughs> just we appeared that episode and then we scheduled it again and i skimmed it that time because it was relatively close to the last time i'd read it and then I read it again this time. And um, I will say that having revisited it a few times, I've kind of like grown numb to the events yeah. of it. It's still yeah. like, like in terms of the, the story beats and everything that's like the actual psychological uh, components, like I still find it super compelling. But the gore isn't affecting me anywhere near as much. Yeah. yeah. Which I think on repeat reads it's gotten better for me mm -hmm, because right. it's like less shock value and just more invested in the the dynamic between these two really fucked up characters mm. Moika? so yeah i i think the first time i heard about this was i think it was through twitter also and it was like people being like oh it's like super fucked up and then i was just like <laughs> How bad can it be? <laughs> and, yeah, I, re I like 
read a few chapters thinking kind of similar what um Brooke said like oh it's Bonnie and Clyde they're gonna like be crazy together and happy and then it was like oh no I can't. <laughs> but, nah, I, I'm not in yeah and I was just like at the time because usually I like psychological horror fucked up shit but at the time I wasn't in the mood for it so I was just like I this is not for me right now mm-hmm. but now that I've read it I'm like damn it's really fucked up but <laughs> I do like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I like that the first time you're like, I'm not in the mood for this. And then the second time you decided to read it while you ate dinner. <laughs> you what? You kind of cut yeah, out. Oh, cut I out. did. Cut out. Oh, I said um, the first time you're like, I'm not in the mood for this. And then the second time you read it, you read it while you were eating dinner. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah I, was, I was just like, oh, I, I saw the first few chapters. Like, because when I read it, it was when it like. Not when it first came out, but it was like a couple of months afterwards. Mm-hmm. And so, the, yeah. when I read it, I was like, "Oh, this is this is pretty gory." And so, when Erin texted me, she was just like, "Hey, can you do you want to come on for this?" And I was just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, this is a good time because I am in the mood for like psychological horror stuff." But at the time, I was just like, "Let me." You know what? Let me multitask. Let me go get dinner and then I'll read while I'm eating. Terrible, terrible decision. <laughs> I was still like really squeamish when they like got into the oh yeah cutting. Um, the part I'm interested. In what makes you guys like what section when you first read it or still like makes you squeam the most? The part for me, mine is when he cuts his chin. That oh, is yeah. the most. Like, I don't know what about it. Like, most of the time, I'm totally fine. Something about just, like, the hang. And it might be the way she draws, like, cuts. Because it's not just red. She gets, like, the muscle and, like, the skin tone. And it glistens. And it glistens. And it's just, (laughs) like, the way it compared to a ham. Like, she had it cutting back and forth between a ham. And it's just, like, flayed and just, like, drops. And then he pulls it back up. And then it drops. And I was just like this, just thinking about this happening to me. That's what freaks yeah. me out, is when something ev- evokes the feeling of, oh my god, if this happened to me. Like whenever like a nail gets <laughs> torn out or something, it's just like, Ugh. That was the reading most. This is, reading this is like watching Hostel. If any of yeah. you remember that movie. Yeah, for sure. In the movie. There's like a torture porn element to some scenes where you're just like, I don't, uh, move on, please, <laughs> don't yeah. Please move on, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> for some reason, the, and this obviously goes on for the whole thing, but, um, like, the fact that his legs get so broken, mm-hmm. and he just, like, yeah. has to deal with broken legs for so long, like, just every scene where he's like trying to crawl around, I'm like, oh fuck. Why are God, you that like this? keeps me out for some reason. Like, oh my I, God. You know what? I think for me, the same about the leg was it wasn't like, oh, here, let's show you like him getting his foot fucked up. It's the fact that whenever they did close ups of it or anybody else who had their like leg broken or whatever, mm. it was just. The way it was colored and everything was just so detailed and it was just mm-hmm. like, oh, it's like you could feel that it was so inflamed even though it's like yeah, on, and it was just so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, for me, probably the moments that like caught me the most were uh, there was a, a, a small section in the very beginning of the reading that we did where uh, Bum was trying to make his way to the door and he was just imagining all the terrible things that would happen to him. Yeah, that's like a really him grabbing good his hair scene. pulled back and getting his throat slit, and mm-hmm. it just kind of it didn't really skeeve me out this time, but definitely the first time, yeah. um, where I was ha- like kind of piecing together exactly what was going on at that moment, whether you know that was actually happening or not, because yeah. uh, Bum's like in that moment we're really um, kind of in Bum's head, and he's kind of torn between like what's actually going on and what is and it's almost like he's like hallucinating what's going on like when he opens the dryer and and he he sees all those dead bodies come out Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's uh, just every, the way the the manwaga I got it. <laughs> the way the, the the way the manwaga um, just depicts body horror in general is it's really well done uh, mm-hmm. without being over the top. Because usually when I think body horror and I think it, I, I usually picture it being like super over the top. Like let's say Parasite. Parasite right. is pretty like renowned for how it how it handled body horror, and but it it took like a really over the top. Um, I guess sci-fi element to to really um, stand out, whereas this manhwa is able to do it with a more grounded uh, visualization. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that the the um, manhwa tried to stay as realistic as possible. So, like going to Aaron's example of the cut to the chin, mm. like I think that's that's a really excellent example. Like. I don't think I don't think I can think of a, a story that told it with that much detail. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. maybe maybe a cheesy horror movie, but it, you know, obviously, yeah. like where the, like there's a skin flap there, like you know, mm-hmm. and it uh, it's not gonna look as good as as this represented it. Mm. Yeah, where um, um, oh, go ahead. No, go for it. Oh, I was just gonna add on to that where it like feels so much real like feels more grounded because of how realistic Mm -hmm. it feels like it looks and so when you're reading it you're like picturing it happening and you're so inside of like bum's head and what's going on that you just at times like lou was saying it's hard to figure out what's reality and what's not and those Mm -hmm. like intense moments yeah i was gonna say that um there's there are lots of little things that sort of lend to reinforcing who they both are so like that scene really reinforces the fact that that bum like already sort of lives in kind of a delusional state that that has heightened and and lower points right um but like that paralyzed feeling of i need to leave but i can't leave and i don't want to leave but i need to leave but I can't leave. You know, like, those moments are really, really interesting. And also, just um, going off of what Lou is describing, the kind of casual feeling of there being bodies around sang apartment, right? Like, this is just what his life is like. You know? Like, yeah. if you just... You, you get this really... Um, I don't think dissociated is the right word, but Sangwoo is is like closed off from feeling any kind of empathy for yeah. the people that he like engages with, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you feel that, you know, when like when you see those moments in his apartment and you're like, holy shit, there's just like a body there, or holy shit, there's like a thing that he probably killed a person with, right? Or, you know, it's mm-hmm. just like it's normal for him because he doesn't care. Yeah. And like, I, I think that those sorts of little things reinforce the two main characters a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just uh, as an aside, because we forgot to mention it, um, part one ends uh, with the murder of Jean, or what's her name? Yeah, what was her name? Jason. Jem, Jiang, something like that. The girl that he does the duet with. So that's where uh, part one ends. It ends with Mm. her getting all sorts of dead. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Exactly what happens. So something that, like, is just so interesting about, like, Bum and Saint Wu is the idea that you're not having one character that's just like pure innocent character that's coming into this, but in a way, Bum is kind of innocent in comparison to Saint Wu because this is a world that he doesn't know, he doesn't understand like sociopaths or uh murder, like serial killing, like he doesn't murder, he doesn't do that. Like, so having him come in and like being that like victim even though you know he in his own way isn't a victim um Mm -hmm. it's just a very interesting it makes the dynamic between them so much more interesting and then i think like 
having Sang Woo be fascinated by Bum um, is another thing that I was like, I really enjoy seeing how Sang Woo kind of like, <laughs> that sounds bad. I was going to say how he toys with Bum, um, but more so, <laughs> less that, and more um, how Bum is influencing him and how he's like so much different than the girls that Sangwoo has like murdered and stuff like what about bum is making Sangwoo keep him alive and keep him around um and watching that play and, out i think is a really interesting yeah and those really sadistic scenes where he like just wants to see how far he can push bum mm -hmm. we get a lot of those yeah and you really like you feel bad for bum in those moments because yeah. you're right like yeah. on on one level he's absolutely the pursuer and then it gets flipped around so early like it gets mm -hmm. flipped so early in the story where you're like oh fuck yeah like he's he's the character that you you wind up for the most part wanting to like get away you um, know he has he has all these moments where it's like just leave just leave you know? yeah. <laughs> it's, i i actually like yeah. the story better because <laughs> Bum wasn't all that pure to begin with mm -hmm. yeah i i feel like if it, it could have uh, gone the easier route, um, where uh, where Bum would have been like one of Sang Woo's just regular victims, you know, fairly innocent person that just kind of gets roped into this. And uh, I think the fact that Bum has his own shortcomings uh, made it so he could have his own character as opposed to sponging off of Sang Woo's. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like if if Bum would have been that innocent character, that's what would have happened. Yeah. Is he would have been absorbing Sangwoo's traits, and then you have a situation where both characters feel exactly the same, and that's not good writing for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sangwoo is written so well, like talking about how he's so charismatic. There's times where I'm just like, he's such a good manipulator that I believe him sometimes when he says that he loves Bum. Or I believe him when he's talking and doing some stuff. I'm like, oh, you do feel this way. Like, Bum has changed you. And then he goes and, like, purposely has sex with this girl against the closet door while Bum is trapped in it and all this shit. And you're just like, wait, no, that's not, that's not how you show affection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's just, like, the reader is getting roped in to all these emotions that like bum is also feeling and you're just i think that's something that makes the storyline so engaging because you're like mm. feeling these things that the other characters are feeling at the same time and that but saying is just such a master manipulator and just so well written yeah mm -hmm. and lou is right like um bum isn't a character that the reader can like connect with really yeah because bum also has moments where like the everyman that is reading this manhwa goes what are you doing like that doesn't make any sense you know they both have like such skewed ways that they view each other and the world and like it's fascinating to watch both of them mm -hmm. it's not just one normal person and a serial killer yeah it's yeah. It, both of them do things that feel like i don't i don't understand this you know and at the same time the longer that it goes on i kind of do and you like and that feeling is weird I, right I, yeah. I have a question which um it kind of hinges very very lightly on spoiler territory um if you guys feel like it's too much of a spoiler, you don't have to answer. But at any point, do they bring up Stockholm uh, Stockholm Syndrome? Because that's what I feel this is, you know, that's what this relationship is kind of built on. I don't think they ever do touch on it. I don't I think, think so. I think they miss... I don't... And I don't know if it's done on purpose or what, but it kind of touches on the whole... Um, for me, it feels because that's that's exactly what I was thinking when they mentioned the bipolar stuff for mm -hmm. like bum. I I was just like, I don't think this is. I don't think it's just 
that. I don't think he's kind of like, oh, like, I need to get out. Oh, no, I don't want to get out. Oh, I like, for me, it was... Right. For me, it was always like, oh, this is straight up just Stockholm Syndrome. He, like... Yeah. It, it's fucked with him, because here he, like, he gets love, and then over here, then he gets beat, and so it's, like, this weird... But he also, yeah. from the... From the get-go, he was obsessed with Sang Woo, right? Yeah. Like, I I think yeah. the reason that they don't talk about that necessarily, at least for me, the reason that they don't talk about that is because he already wanted Sang Woo to love him. Yeah. He already was obsessed with Sang Woo, you know? So yeah. even though these terrible things keep happening to him, I think that for me at least it always felt like the justification for him to say but i i don't want to leave him or oh but i hope he loves me or i love him right those mm -hmm. sorts of moments always felt like they were evidence of him slipping back into like stalker delusions yeah. about mm -hmm. saying woo you know yeah. so mm -hmm. i i figured that i figured that's why it was never brought up because there's more going on there you know yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense yeah. That's kind of how I felt about it, too. Um, what did you guys think about... Uh, oh. Sorry, I was no, going to say... Um, the, back to the point of view thing, I, I another reason that I like that Bum isn't like this innocent character is because the girl that gets brought, brought up at that towards the end, ji I feel like she's like that perfect example of this is a normal person and this is their yeah. point of view like when all this fucked up shit and then i think I, that was when i started to realize oh that, like he is just that charismatic where like he can get away with it because he's just so good at this manipulative stuff and just mm. yeah Sang -woo, <laughs> <laughs> Sang Woo Uh what do you guys think about the cop? I like him. I like him a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Oh my god. But he's he's a character that like hurts, you know, because like he's one of those he's one of those characters where you love him as a character, but his story is so frustrating. Yeah. Because you're like yeah. He's right, right? Like, it drives <laughs> you nuts. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys oh. think he was going to die when he went into the house? Like, what were you guys' thoughts about that? Oh, yeah, I know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I, yeah. originally, I didn't think he was going to die. I thought he was going to get, like, he was going to get, like, knocked out, and then he was going to be the one stuck in the basement. And yeah. And it was just like, oh, no, that's not what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that too, where it was just like, oh my god, the tension of not knowing, one, not knowing of like, what the hell Sang Woo is gonna do, um, combined with, oh my god, is he gonna find Bum? Like, just the yeah. tension of those two things in, like, escalating in unison was so intense to just read. I was like, oh my god, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, probably, I'm happy he got out of there. That was probably like my favorite section of the reading because it was just, it was tense without relying on like extremely graphic visuals. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. And then we even had Sang Woo being like, where did Bum go? Like what? Yeah, like, yeah that... that was a good scene yeah. too. It really was. Yeah. We see him get real pissed and running around all frantic. You're like, yes, I love seeing a different side of Sang Woo. What's going on mm -hmm. with you? The moments when he's like terrified are yeah. really interesting with Sang Woo because he's so confident and aggressive and domineering. Mm -hmm. That those moments that he like panics are really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about the art? Let's talk about that. I love it. I think the it's, art's like, great. it's so mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad that a lot of like web web based manhwa, it's very normalized for it all to be in color. Uh -huh. um, and I think the way that it's colored lends itself so much to the creep factor of a lot of things, like Aaron was talking about. Yeah. 
I think the having it in color and that detail really ups the ante with the mm -hmm. gore factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's, for me, it's, like, easier to get invested into the scenes because I don't have to, I don't have to waste time, like, if trying to imagine on top of everything that's happening, like, oh, like, this is a basement, so here's what the lighting would be like in, like, in my mind. So because it's already painted, I don't have to worry about anything like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it definitely makes, um, it definitely makes it a more accessible read. Mm -hmm. Um, for the, for the reasons that you guys mentioned. Uh, also, I feel like it's just, because of, uh, because of the color, it's just more stimulating. Like, for me, it's, easier to get immersed in something that has color as opposed to black and white that's why when a manga is really really fucking good one of the first sentences that usually comes out of my mouth is can we get an anime of this please right mm -hmm. you know with the exception of Kung Fu, because never animate that please <laughs> no yeah um and i kind of said i said this earlier but uh kugi is really good about expressions um mm -hmm. and just the way she displays people's different feelings through the expressions and like sometimes not even needing dialogue and so this can be a pretty fast read because there's a lot of times like many other manhwa where there's no dialogue it's just the action and so you're just kind of scrolling through but you're seeing all these emotions play out on the characters faces or um their actions as they're moving around or doing things and it just feels so alive it's so real um, that it feels like you're reading a flip book or you're watching an animation happen. So um, I have uh, one last point I'd like to make on art. And yes. are the shiny dicks as immersion breaking for you guys as they are for me? <laughs> yes. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Just all of a sudden shiny dicks. There they this are. Is shattering Im yeah. immersion. Like mm -hmm. here I am, wholly invested in this. Trying to have a nice up, time. <laughs> this fucked up scene between two lads doing their thing. Between two lads, twixt the sheets. Twixt the sheets. And you know they're they're, you know each of them is just grabbing grabbing their little lightsaber, <laughs> swinging it about, trying to trying to have a party, and it's just really distracting and immersion breaking. That's yeah. Fair. Yeah. That must be, like, it has to be a thing for the censorship over there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, definitely. Something, yeah. It's always shiny dicks, because that's how it was in Sweet Guy, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sweet mm -hmm. Guy. Um, there's been a few others that I've read that are, like, the dicks are just so shiny and glowy. <laughs> now, like, oh here's my. My, my question. Do they draw the dick and then remove it? And add this layer censorship. So, is there an uncensored so. version of this? I think there's an uncensored version for like potential publishing and stuff, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know for sure. Hmm. I like to think that they draw the dick, they just have a Photoshop layer that's just dick <laughs> that they just toggle yeah. on and off <laughs> yeah. when they need it. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything else that you would like to touch on? Otherwise, we'll go ahead and do final thoughts and ratings. Oh, my favorite, what, well, two things. Like, I have a lot to say about this one. No, do it. Go, go, um, go. Let's So, keep going. the scene in the rain. Yeah. I thought that was a yeah. super interesting scene that established how much, um, how much thought Sang Woo put into this lifestyle that he's living, where uh -huh. he specifically chose a neighborhood where he could do what he does without really being disturbed. Uh -huh. Um, I think it it was really um, it added a nice uh, little bit of depth, but also I like how it played into the like introduction of the cop as a significant and important character. Yeah. You know, with the whole like dash cam footage. Yeah. That. So, yeah. So there was that, and uh, m my favorite, most unintentionally funny part of this entire uh, manhwa was saying Wu just finding a wrench and throwing it at the lady. Yeah. I should turn oh, yeah. 
I laughed. That's it. I laughed. It was so fucking funny to He's me. He's like, I just got stuff around and you just toss it and just get smacked off the stairs. I agree. I agree. That was pretty like chuckly. Um <laughs> the whole going with the scene in the rain, I agree. That scene is really well done. And that kind of is mm. also another moment of where the action is shown through the panel so well, where you're just watching it play out so smoothly. Um, and when he opened the door and Sangwoo was there, if like, I felt just my heart drop for Bum because I was like, I knew Bum was again away, obviously, yeah. but I did not yeah. expect like Sangwoo to just be sitting there singing that song. And I think that's a moment where. That song became so haunting. It's just so distinct to that scene. Um, yeah. It made it even creepier. And you can just see where Bum is like, oh no, I crossed the line. And it just I freaks fucked out. Up. I fucked up. <laughs> and like, there is that like desperate part of him where like, as much as he loves Sangwoo and wants to be like with him and wants to believe he's with him, he is that like fight or flight instinct he's very much a flight person and he just like i think went on instinct is like i have to get i have to get out of here like this is what i, I gotta you. do i gotta get out of there for it yeah it's yeah. just so messed up killing stalking <laughs> yeah the way i thought that that scene was going to go was that he wasn't going to be directly in front of the door but I thought, oh, he'll be, like, around the corner of the block or something. Just to right. see how, like... Because for me, it was... I was thinking, oh, he, he's definitely testing him. But I am I wonder if it's, like... Oh, he's going to cross that line. And I'm going to punish him. But I'm going to punish him based on how far out he goes. And so it was just like, oh, no. He is straight up there. Like, okay. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, and... It kind of sets the tone for later times where you're like, you can't trust Sangwoo to, like, not be testing Bob. So there's you're constantly doubting, is this him testing Bob or is this him actually showing affection to Bob or, like, showing that he's becoming... Or trusting him. Trusting yeah. him. So it really sets up that um, dynamic in your brain where you're just like, I don't... I just don't know what to believe with him. I still don't know mm. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Dude, these guys. These, <laughs> these, these two lads. <laughs> these two oh, lads. Avi in the chat brought up the card game scene. That was also... Oh, yes. Scene. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, yeah. What did you guys think when it was revealed that Sangwoo had tied the knife or taped the knife like towards the guy? Is that what it... Because in that scene, um, Sangwoo t does the tape around the guy's hand. As well as he's holding the knife. And then it's revealed that he has the knife pointed at himself instead. I remember being, like, caught off guard by that and surprised mm -hmm. by the fact that, like, I knew the old guy was going to die. But I just right. thought that was a really interesting way mm -hmm. to have him be killed. And so it's like Sangwoo... Uh, <clears throat> makes it so that Bob is like the one who physically pushed the knife into him by being like rammed in even though he didn't actually do it and so that mm. just is like makes for another step up of that relationship like the mm -hmm. fucked upness See, I think that, and, sorry all right, I was gonna say <laughs> sorry um, that for me that was kind of telegraphed a little bit too much with the dialogue that was going on at the time mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, sh be quiet. Just act like, keep screaming, you know, as, as he's being pushed forward. Uh, I feel like it would have been better if, um, uh, if Bum's mouth was like taped shut or something. And, um, the foreshadowing would have been in Bum's expression instead. Yeah. Like, really playing off of the Manwaga's strength, mm -hmm. um, in terms of like, you know, how expressive they can draw eyes, for example. Um, it was still a great scene, though. I I, I definitely like uh, I like that, and I like the lead up to that, where um, where Sangwoo was, you know, being helpful and and helping Bumchi and ultimately screwing him over at the end. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna say I think that scene, if I remember right, 
from the first time that I read this stuff. That scene was like so surprising to me because up till that point, it really did feel like the story was establishing kind of like a connection between them. And I think that scene is one of those points where you realize like, oh no, he's a sociopath and he doesn't care about Bum, right? Yeah. Like he's like, yeah, I, I remember so vividly when that scene happened. I was like, how can you do this to poor Bum? My God. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, what kind of monster are you? <laughs> yes. Obviously, he's a big old monster. Right? Mm -hmm. But, like, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I remember first reading that scene and being like, wow, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't he give a doesn't shit. Care. He yeah. doesn't care. No. no I think for me, it just reinforced how, like, deceptive Bum is to what he's yeah. told. Because, yeah. like,. I was thinking, like, if that was me and he was just like, oh, like, you killed someone, I'd be like, no, I didn't. You, like, you pushed me, like, into him. I wouldn't have killed him. But to Bum, it was like, for me, it felt like it was, like, him being like, oh, no, I, like, I'm the one who jammed this knife into him, like, without any, any other person's help. And it was yeah. just like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, should we do final thoughts and ratings? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Who would like to go first? Anybody? I'm trying to think of a score. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind going first. Do it. Okay. Do it. All right. So, um, I really enjoyed what I read. Um, in terms of how it was as a, psycho a psychological horror, I think it it creates a very tense and heavy atmosphere. And um, it's a very quick read. Um, and I think it accomplishes that without having to be uh, too obtuse in what it's trying to do. It's, it's a very straightforward story. And um, I, I really admire that. I think the fact that you could take something as simple as a as a, ser a serial killer with some very real and, and grounded characters, albeit like really fucked up and damaged characters, but still grounded in reality and, and create a, a really grounded story. I think I, that deserves some, um, some merit. Uh, my issues with it are, are very like minor. Um, within that one part that we read, there hasn't really been a lot of advancement in terms of bum making you know getting out of there in any capacity um but then again you know this is still very early in the story like it's all about establishing the relationship between the two of them um who knows like who knows where this is gonna end like if i had to predict what the ending for this would be mm. like projecting like past part two pat, and like into part three or into the future or whatever. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, Bum ends up killing uh, Sengwu. I think that would make for a pretty fitting ending. Um, yeah. yeah. That said, uh, you know, projections aside, I think if I was to give it a number score, it'd be an eight out of 10. Um, just because I would like to see it develop more. Mm -hmm. um, now, based on, you know, the little preview that that good old Dukes gave me, uh, I'm kind of upset at the fact that it kind of scales back the psychological. You might not. Really yeah, you might not feel the same way that I did, but part one I think is much stronger than part two, mm. and it could it could do this, and part three could be great. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm open to reading more of it, so mm. I think an eight out of ten should be in you know representative of the fact that yeah like i'd totally read more of this if given the opportunity yeah and that's it that that's those are my thoughts <laughs> uh i think an eight out of ten is probably what i would give it to um eight to eight and a half uh just echoing everything that lou said i think it does psychological horror 
amazing and exactly how a psychological horror should be done. It does body horror really well. Um, and it's just created a really fascinating and unique dynamic between the two characters that you don't really see in many stories at all. Like, it's a very unique relationship that I have, like, I try to think of a different story where I've read something like this and I can't put my finger on it or have done it. Um, and the art is fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and I just think as a series overall, it's very, very solid in this part to do and it sets out what it's trying to do and that's still like an interesting story about these two characters and it's doing it really well so 8 out of 10 yeah that sounds right to me yeah, 8 out of 10 I, yeah, yeah I think I, I for me yeah 8 out of 10 as well um, mm. for me I felt like I, I, I think part 2 does feel like it changes gears because the the way I saw it was, the way I saw it was, it's like it's more you're learning more about specific characters, and so for me, I think I think you're right in that it's strong. It part one is really strong start, and then it kind of sl it's like slowing down in part two. So for me, I think that's why I would give it an eight out of ten just to see how later on it progresses which is why i want to keep reading it and yes. uh, find out what the fuck is going on <laughs> what, is like this? what happened to him yeah, yeah like so yeah 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 i yeah i i mean there's nothing more to say really yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh eight out of ten i i think i think the first part is so different from anything else that I've ever read, manga or manhwa. Um, I think it touches on character dynamics and it characterizes people in a way that I have never seen um, in this type of medium before. And I think that that's really cool. Um, and yeah, I am, you know, it's true. I'm really curious how it's gonna end. I'm really curious what's gonna go on in this story for sure. Um, so, despite the fact that I'm like, ah, part two's garbage, I'm just going to keep making it more extreme. <laughs> part two is the worst thing I've ever read. <laughs> um, despite that, uh, I, I see myself reading all of it, probably, because I just got to know. It's a train wreck that never ends. <laughs> like, I yeah. just got to know what's going to happen. So, yeah. I yeah. Think, and I think that's another strength is the like mystery surrounding a few of the characters that it's mm. it's so strong that it's like I might not be having as good of a like good time part two, but I like it's just the suspense is so well done and then the mystery is just so strong that you're like I I how the fuck is this gonna end? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I need to know, please finish. I need yeah. to know <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, well, that wraps up our discussion on Killing Stalking Part 1. Uh, if it sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and go check it out. I'm going to now read the description for the manga that we are reading next week. And then you guys in chat get to guess what it is. Yay! Yay! Oh, it's a long one. Oh, no. <laughs> While most girls desire popularity among boys, Blake wants the exact opposite. After attracting many admirers back in middle school, which resulted in her being shunned by her female classmates, she decided that high school will be her chance to revamp her image. Therefore, she starts acting unfeminine and indifferent to boys, allowing her to make some friends along the way. Little does she know her life will take another drastic turn when her first love returns after his sudden disappearance years ago in middle school. Despite his extended absence the fond memories they shared together still linger in her mind and she wishes to return to those day days but she realizes that the sweet gentle boy of the past has completely vanished and in his place stands someone cold and pessimistic while he admits that her feelings for him back then were mutual he warns they can never go back to the past as everything including him has changed blank what is it what is it? What is it? Yay, Alhara Ride! Yay! 
Hell yeah. We're going from extreme gore to fluff. To extreme <laughs> cuteness. <laughs> 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 I love how hard to write. I'm so excited to read more of it. I do too. Yeah. I've read the whole thing and I love the whole thing. Aww. I'm excited mm -hmm. to go ahead and read more. So that is what we're reading next week. We are going to be reading chapters 16 through 35.5. So that's what we are reading next week. Um, Let's go around and shout out our stuff super fast. I'm Aaron of Happily Aaron. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I haven't posted any videos really in a long time. Uh, but if you want to check out my previous anime stuff, it's all there as well as the manga pods um, and mental health awareness videos. I am currently working on a novel, so that is where all my time has been going. Um, and so I'm much more active on other social media like Twitter and Instagram, and I Happily Aaron all across the everything. So go ahead and check me out there. Hi guys, I'm Dodger. You can find me at Dex Bonus on pretty much everything. Um, tomorrow night, I'm going to be playing Call of Cthulhu with my husband, and he's going to help me through the spoops. So if you would like to watch that, it's going to be a, a Rick Rollin' good time. Um, but <laughs> but I stream pretty much every day, and um, just have a goofy good time. If you like that, then come hang out. Yeah. My name is Lou, and I'm from Lou Talks Anime. And uh, I don't do much of anything anymore. I just manga pod. Um, like that. I have a new, I have a new apartment. Yeah, like yeah. That's so nice. So it, it's been it's been a, a process to set it up. I'm mostly done. Feel pretty good about things. I need to decorate that wall right there, and then I think I'll be good. Um, I'll eventually get back to making videos. I I want to do anime videos again because it's been a while and I have things I want to say. Um, part of the struggle is I don't watch seasonal anime anymore. So yeah. I could yeah. say those things and no one's going to give up, is going to give a fuck about them. Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. Watch Castlevania season two on Netflix. It's yes. Oh, it's so good. I haven't it's watched so it yet. Good. I started Sabrina. Oh, I've been, I need I've to watch Castlevania. To check that out. It looks, it looks cute. Did you watch Riverdale? No. Okay. It's so the new Sabrina is like super campy, like kind of silly, but it's like sitting in a deep well of hardcore occult shit. And it's really oh, interesting okay. to me. Like, I really like it. <laughs> Yeah, because so. the only thing I've seen about it is on Twitter, and a lot of people that I've seen are all being kind of snobby, I feel, about it, because they're like, I only watch Sabrina for the talking puppet cat. And yeah. I was literally You're just saying that talking about it. Like, so I many know. people keep complaining about Salem, because it's not a comedy anymore, right? So, like, mm -hmm. they keep, keep being like, Salem's too different. I was telling Aaron, yo. Fuck them. After watching this, I would take this Salem. I, I would take this Salem from the new Sabrina like 10 out of 10 times. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I, I'll, I, I'll check that out. I think if you like shows that are a little bit trashy, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I like it a lot. Sounds like right up my alley. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Trashy. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I, guess, I guess my turn. Um, yeah. Hello, I'm Moika. I also I just realized at the beginning I like blanked and I did my social media stuff then. But um, in case oh, I'm here at the beginning, um, pretty <laughs> much on YouTube. I'm I, I'm really active on Twitter and Twitch right now. So at Mega Moika, um, if you want to, you can just find me on twitter.com slash megamoika and then I have all my stuff listed through my website if you are uh, wanting to check me out but yeah awesome <laughs> thank you so much for coming on we love having you as always Aww, thanks. I, love, I always love being on so Aww. yeah you're the best thank you 
Um, <laughs> if you guys would like more manga pod, we have a subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash manga pod. The schedule for the rest of the year is up there, as well as a recommendation thread. If there's something you would like us to check out, go ahead and post it there. If it's already there, go ahead and upvote it. Uh, otherwise, we will be here, same time, same place, next week, 7.30 p.m., talking Al Haru Rai, chapter 16 through 35.5. So we will see you guys then. Bye. 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 Bye.